I'm saving the vagina cream for you till later because we're going to ask for a volunteer who's going to put it on. And why do I hand out vagina cream? It's really vagina cream. Now, the ladies, we've had guys in here, gals, that don't even know what the hell this is. How can you even be 17 or 18 years old and not know that women put shit on their private parts? How is that possible? That's why I say we're going down the fucking toilet. So I'll give you a couple days to see who's going to volunteer so you can just think about it. You think I'm cheating? I'm not. I don't know why I keep looking at you for about this, but anyway, somehow I have a, there is a, a visual kind of connection between my vagina cream and you looking at me. I don't know what it is. It's probably not good, but um, I'm not going to go through my little speech about good morning because everybody's heard that at least 10 times if they listen to me, but I do want to make a couple of comments. Um, one is, this is the club I couldn't afford in 1980, 81, which I'm still a member of in Los Angeles, the California club, which is rated in the top 10 clubs of the world. It used to be called a men's club in the good old days, the way it should be. Women were only allowed in the club on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the way it should be. They, only, they could only come up the service elevator, the way it fucking should be. But now there's a president of this club that's a lady. I don't know if she's a lady, she's a gal, she's a female. But this was a club I couldn't afford. And one of the things I say, join a club you can't afford. Or as Groucho Marx used to say, way before all of your times, who had a brother named uh, Harpo Marx, and he had a brother named Hippo Marx, and I forget what the other brother named, is I wouldn't want to join any club that would accept me. He said it a different way. And he was referring to Bel Air Country Club, uh, in Bel Air, California, which at that time and still t even today is a predominantly Jewish country club. And, um, but it's one of the things that I tell you to do is join a club you can't afford. And, uh, but back in this day, in 1980, I started the interviewing or the process to join in 1980. You had to have three uh, persons, uh, individuals that recommended you. Uh, and they interviewed your parents. Now, just think about that for a moment. How many of you would get by the interviewing process if they had to interview your mommy and daddy to get in the goddamn club? Now, some of you would be outraged, right? Well, any club that would have, where it was a requirement to interview my parents, I wouldn't want to join. That's what you'd say, right? And you'd stay fucking poor! They interviewed my parents. And remember, my mother came across the Rio Grande River as an illegal alien. So I wasn't part of the interviewing process. In hindsight, after many, many years now, I'm glad I wasn't, because I, um, I can't even imagine what my parents said during that interview. But what if you could get in the best club on the planet, for those of you that wouldn't be outraged because it was socially unacceptable, can you just imagine for a micro-fucking second what your parents would, they had 25 questions. To this day, I don't know what the questions were, I can only imagine what they were, and I can only imagine how my parents answered them. Three or four years later, they stopped that, 1987. And when, if you're black, brown, yellow, Chinese, whatever, in 1987, they made it a, a federal statute that you had to accept women, you had to expect, uh, accept people of color, 1987, a federal statute. So whenever I get into a room with um, high-profile people that are minorities, of color, whatever. I always say, you got in in 87, didn't you? And so far, to date, I know somebody on YouTube is going to correct me, not one goddamn person has ever told me they got in before 1987, when the federal government made them accept them. I got in in 81. Thank you, Edward. I got an 81 because they really wanted me as a member. And I poked the black guys in the eye and I poked the Chinese in the eye and I poked the bitches, women in the eye for that because I got in six year, six sex, six, Freudian slip, six years ahead of the curve. And I'm still a member. Now you need seven to recommend you because since 87, they can't or they don't or they won't interview your parents. 
And most of the clubs that you can't afford um, have um, uh, variations of membership. If you're under 25, if you're under 30, if you're under 40, if you're under, uh, I don't think there's any, uh, uh, if you're uh, under 50. And they, you, you pay a different rate, but then when you reach 40, you have to catch up with, if it was 25 or 50 grand when, uh, at 40, and you only paid five grand at 25, you have to catch up when you're 40, because they're assuming that you will make more than enough money if you use the club right. And the irony is, you're not supposed to talk business in the club. That's the fucking irony of this club, or in almost all the great clubs around the planet. Yet, it's the place that everybody congregates to talk business. But you're not, and you can't bring in papers, and you can't bring in laptops and shit like that. And I go a couple times a year, just to see how things are going. And uh, some of the guys that were the shoeshine boys, I don't even know if they have shoeshine people anymore, and they were always black, uh, are now the general manager of the fucking club. So when I come into that club, it's like King Farouk, Muhammad, and the Pope. Because they remember from back in 81, when I was a minority member. I was the first minority member of the Johnson Club because I was Hispanic. But if I hadn't had blue eyes, I would never got to be a fucking member. Everybody understand that? Do they have blue eyed blacks? Yeah, they might. Well, maybe if I was black with blue eyes, I might have got made. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway. Um, but I got it this morning, so it made me think of that. A couple of other things and one announcements. Yes, I did announce last night. It wasn't um, uh, a nightmare that I'm giving, first time in this century, I'm giving a seminar at the um, London Heathrow Airport. And if you want information on it, go to my website. This is another announcement I made last night. You can run, but you can't hide. Shane Stanford, I have you in my sights. I'm going to hunt you down like a motherfucking dog that you are. So you didn't mishear me on YouTube saying that either. When you fuck with people, guys, like you, each other, you, you, you text somebody something nasty, you know? We don't do that, guys like me. We kill your goldfish. When I say I'm going to fuck with you, or anybody like me says they're going to fuck with you, that's exactly what they mean. It doesn't matter the expense. I've spent a million dollars over a $10,000 trophy in court. To right or wrong. So be careful who you piss off. Well, you shouldn't be pissing off anybody like Bill Gates. Or you shouldn't be pissing off anybody like me. Or you shouldn't be pissing off anybody like Warren Buffett. And we, we have had students, mentees, whatever you want to call yourselves, that have gotten through to Warren. That have gotten through to Charlie Munger. That have gotten through to Bill Gates. Had gotten through to Steve Jobs when he was still alive. Have gotten through to Elon Musk in their search for dream teams. Because contrary to what you've been taught, you can contact those people if you try hard enough. The operative word is try, well, those are more than one word, try hard enough. How many ever words that is? And what you normally do is you make one or two phone calls, if at that. And the guy that got through to Bill Gates, his email address at Microsoft used to be bgates at microsoft.com. Now, <laughs> That's pretty simple, isn't it? So finally, some dipshit eight or 10 years ago, or uh, maybe longer when he was still at Microsoft, tried that, and guess what? His personal secretary responded back, uh, does Mr. Gates know you? And he said, and then instead, we're gonna teach you what to say. But this dipshit said the wrong thing. No, I'm just a fucking turd from uh, Topeka, Kansas. I don't, and I'm just poor and I'm trying to get rich. But anyway, we teach you what to say. Okay? Of course, he knows of me. And so for those of you that are more or less and you don't want to lie, we, we give you a little scripts and templates to say so you uh, won't infringe upon, upon any religious beliefs you might have. Remember, anything goes in QLA as long as legal, moral, and ethical. Now, 
moral, morality and ethics swing in the wind. If you're from Israel, where's my, is my, my Jew boy right there? And I mean that positively, so don't give me a bunch of shit from uh, YouTube. There's different kind of morals and ethics in Israel. If you're from Russia, whether you're a Jew or not, there's different kinds of morals and ethics in Russia. If you're from New Jersey, <laughs> there's different kinds of morals and ethics in New Jersey. But where there's a rule of law, legal is legal. So whenever you want to do something that I might not do, you blame it on morality and ethics. Because Dan said, as long as it's moral and ethical and legal, I can do it. So normally it's the uh, legal. Now, I'm not going to forget this time. We're going to go around. My name is Rufus. I'm uh, 56 years old. Um, I'm from uh, uh, Hoboken, New Jersey. Uh, and um, that's it. First name, age, and where you're from. Everybody in the room. Okay, yes, sir. My name is Gerard Rutjes, 40 year, uh, 41 years old, from Antwerp. I'm there, 35, Kuwait. Alex, 48, Virginia. Agnes, 37, Poland. That's my mama's name, Amy. Don't have a lightning bolt strike me dead here. Okay, go ahead. Now, needless to say, we, we're from all over the place, predominantly from America. I think there's 10 of you from the United States, uh, at least admit to it, and 14 of you are from other parts of the world. Uh, the, um, but the average age of this group is um, 37.8, call it 39 years old. The uh, youngest, uh, we have a 22 uh, year old or a 22 year old and a 25 year old, if I remember correctly. And the oldest, I believe, is 55 or 56. Um, so this is a slightly older group. Normally, the average age, instead of being in the late 30s, is normally in the early 30s. Um, but my demographics have changed. Ten years ago, it was from 35 to 55. That was the group that came to me. In the last 10 years, specifically, and it's really been uh, uh, buoyed or leveraged because the last three or four years, it's now 15 to 35. 15. We have 13, 14, and 15-year-olds that are making 10 grand a month off of QLA. I'm going to say it again slow because you, your synapses aren't firing as much because you're an older group, right? 13, 14, 15-year-olds making 10, 12, 15,000 a month. I'm going to show you a slide in a little bit, and I mentioned him last night, a guy from South Africa who read about me somehow in a nightmare. He saw me on January 4th or 5th uh, on YouTube. He followed me, and on May 21st or 22nd, he did a deal that he netted, and he put $13 million in his bank account, and he sent me the bank statements, and I verified all the shit from the beginning of January to the more or less the end of May. He's never met me. Other than I verified who the fuck he is. He has never been here, and he's only participated vis-a-vis -vis the free material on the internet. Who do you attribute the change in demographics? Because when, when you and I were kids, or for the guys that are, let's say, uh, mid-40s or older, when your parents talk shit to you, you just put your head down. If you wanted to stay at home, you put your head down and you didn't say anything. You say, Dad, you're full of shit. You know, you didn't say that. Okay, I certainly didn't. My dad believed in spare the rod, spoil the child. When he told me to stand here, I would stand here short of a tsunami knocking me fucking down. I wouldn't move for hours or days because I knew what was in for me if I did something my dad didn't want me to do. Now, the kids get talked to by their parents and they Google fuck it. And they know mom's full of shit. They know dad's full of shit. And guys and gals, that you, those of you that have teenagers, most of the stuff you tell them is shit. 
because as I said last night, your parents said, I don't know what I don't know, and um, the, uh, we did the best we could. Well, the kids now know the best you could isn't worth a shit. Some of you in this room prior to this week still believe the best you could is mean something. It doesn't mean a goddamn thing. And your children know it. So if your children know you're talking shit, they look for other answers. Now, I, instead of going to drugs, they come to me. Because I am a drug. I am a cult leader. Better they come to me than drugs. In my day, it wasn't drugs. I used to rob, we used to rob people and knock them down, take their money. Now, I never robbed liquor stores with guns, but I had guys in my neighborhood that certainly did. And so now they go to the internet and then they find me. Some say it's, um, I've had, um, I've had you students that their parents were wealthy. They had intervention, had them kidnapped, taken away to um, places where they, un, uh, they uh, desensitize you, you the, with the words they use, shock therapy to get the QLA and the pina pena out of your brain. One kid got kidnapped, not once, not twice, but three fucking times by his rich parents and put shock therapy. And he came back after the third time. He twitches a little now. You can't shock therapy, Pina out of you. I'm like AIDS with no fucking cure. You may not utilize what you're going to learn here, but you're never going to be able to say, I didn't know how to fucking do it. Never. You're never going to be able, some of you won't be able to stomach it. We have QLA barf bags. So when you toss your cookies, and some of you will. A guy that's soon to be on the Hall of Fame, who I brag about, the two best deals I've seen in the last 25 years. After one deal, I said it was the best deal I've seen in 20 years. Seven, eight weeks, ten weeks later, he, he comes up with another deal. The second best deal I've seen in 25 years, it's both the same guy. And he's gonna, you're going to see a webinar of him. The, don't, when, we don't show it to uh, YouTube, where he said he threw up before his meetings. And he, he got it all over his new suit and his fucking shoes. He was so scared, he threw up. Two best deals in the last 25 years, and I've seen a lot of fucking deals, kids. And if it's the two best deals I've seen, it may be the two best deals on the fucking planet. One little shit this tall. He made 30,000 euros a year, which is about $34,000, $35,000 before he came here. He came to a seminar once. Then he came to the uh, hardcore in 2017. Then he did his, these two deals in the spring, summer of 2018. Then he came back again last seminar, April. Now, why would a guy that's now worth about 50 million euros, which isn't a lot of money, but anyway, it's better than his 30,000 euro, uh, euros uh, a year salary, why would he come back yet again? Because as I said last night, default's a motherfucker. And your default is your home life. Your default are your kids. Your default are your parents. We've had women that have gone through the seminar that talk to their mothers 12, 14, 15 times a day. May God strike me fucking dead if I'm not telling the truth. Nothing you can talk to your mother about 15 times a day is anything but neurotic bullshit. And she wasn't dying of cancer or anything. No. She was alive. She was about a 225-pound tub of shit, the mom was that had to talk to her daughter every 45 minutes, more or less. Now, some of you in this room talk to your parents, maybe not 15 times a day, but there's nothing you can talk about them daily, even. On that happy note, you YouTubers, thank you. Uh, all the questions are answered on my website. Don't be calling the fucking office about the seminar in January, please. Uh, and... Um, the, uh, based on yesterday's, I'm going to go over the stats of yesterday's open call that we had, Ask Dan. But preliminarily, my, with my crack staff tells me uh, that the results were good. Isn't that right? In fact, they were outstanding. Um, and when I tell you it's going to start at 2 o'clock UK time, 
and you get on the call at 2.56, and the call's only going to be an hour long, don't bitch to me that you missed the fucking call. We got a bunch of complaints that I was only on the call at 7 minutes, 11 minutes. Well, if you had got up out of your fucking bed, because 2 o'clock in the afternoon here in uh, Los Angeles at 6 in the morning. So don't bitch to me, you missed the call. Okay, YouTube, thank you.